Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to hopefully be fixing the last broken piece of the puzzle on the Cobra behind me, you know, get it ready for spring, everything like that. So I don't know if I'm going to go as far as to pull the rear tonight. I'll see how I feel when I get under there, but I do want to do a couple things. So let me show you guys what I got going on. So for starters, I definitely want to get the front lug nuts on the car. This car has mixed max mi <laughs> mismatched lug nuts on the whole entire car. Some of them are locking, some are 21, some are 19s. Um, we need to get proper lug nuts on the car. Um, as you guys already know from the last video, I have ARP studs for this car. So that is why I went with an open end lug nut. I'm going to need those for the track. So I'm going to get the front lug nuts swapped over. I'm just going to do one at a time. This way I don't have to lift the front of the car. Just take one off, put one on, nice and simple. And then I also have the factory size speedometer gear right here. So I'm going to get that tossed in. And the reason for that is because we need to run a speed cal on this car because we are going with a much steeper gear than what is in the car right now. And then um, probably get it jacked up and everything, get the wheels off, and I'll take a look and see... If I want to pull the rear or not, I might, I may not. We'll see. <laughs> So now that we have all matching lug nuts over here and on the other side also, this is what we were dealing with. So more or less, we had some spline drive lug nuts. We had some 21 millimeter lug nuts. We had, there's a 19 millimeter lug nut in there. So definitely not something that I want to be playing with. I just want all the same size lug nuts because it just makes my life a ton easier. So I'm about to pull the, um, I'm about to, for one, I'm about to jack this thing up, uh, pull the back wheels and we'll get the gear changed in the transmission. If you guys have never done that before, it's not very difficult to do. I'll show you guys how to do that. And uh, we'll get these back wheels off and I'll make up my mind if I, really want to do work tonight or if i want to wait till maybe sunday to do it i don't know we'll figure it out but let's keep moving uh, i do want this car done by the spring which is probably about a month away give or take so i definitely need to get this car done so just really quickly guys i want to show you why we're even rebuilding this rear okay the car is in first gear right now Okay, keep that in mind. I'm gonna put this breaker bar on one of the lug nuts and I want you guys to see how much this car moves. And then I'll explain to you guys why it's doing that. Okay, so for, for one, there is a really nasty noise from the rear end in this car. When you're deaccelerating, there's no noise. When you're accelerating, there's no noise. But when you're steady on the throttle, like say you were driving down the highway doing like 65, 70 miles an hour, and you're lightly on the throttle, all the rear does is grind the whole entire time. It's like <sighs> driving down the road. And it's very, very annoying. And obviously it's not good for a car that I'm going to be trying to break the 11s with. You know, the last thing I want to do is drive this car to the track and blow the rear on the track and then just have a mess on my hands, try to get it home and everything. It would be a pain in the ass. So look at how much this car moves. You ready? Watch this. That is in gear. This car should not move 
nearly that much in gear, right? So the, the whole thing is, is last time I had this car off, off the ground, I was able to spin the pinion pretty much halfway around, just free slop. Obviously, that should not be. It should be much tighter than that. I mean, it should maybe spin like maybe an eighth a turn at max. It should not spin like halfway around. So just keep that in mind. Um, I do believe what we're going to find wrong in this diff is we're probably going to have either a ton of backlash on the gears or we're going to have an issue with the pinion bearings because the pinion does have play up and down. So something is seriously wrong with this diff. Now, keep in mind, I've done probably 100 passes at the track on a full slick with this rear in the car. So it's seen a lot of abuse and it's not like built, built. It, it has like a, like a Ford racing uh, track lock and, um, you know, it, gears it has 410 gears um but it's nothing crazy is done to it what we're doing now is pretty much going to be building it to support a thousand horsepower which this car may never even see so we're definitely going overkill but i'd rather go overkill for a car that's going to see 7,000 rpm clutch drops than do underkill and have to redo it again so just keep that in mind um rear is definitely bad for sure <laughs> me it's a little tight under here but I see I could put the light over here for you guys all right all right right there so what we're after for the speedo gear is this guy right here one bolt holds it right here it's like a little fork uh, I'm pretty sure it's an 11 millimeter it could be a 10 I'll let you guys know, but I'm going to pull this off really quickly. Um, you, you're obviously going to want to unplug it. No big deal there. Just like that. Just unplug it. Your speed cal will get wired into this, but we'll uh, that'll be another video for you guys. Um, so I'm going to get this one bolt out, and we're going to take this sensor out, and we're going to go get it swapped out for the proper stock factory gear. But yeah, all you Mustang guys, that's where your speedometer gets its signal from right there guys so here is our speedo gear as you can see i just replaced this and they tell you do not go with the 23 23 tooth gear in the cobras and there's obviously good reason for it as you can see most of the teeth are missing on this gear now the reason for that is that it's just too high of a ratio and it chews up the teeth because the teeth are too thin so my speedo was honestly about to stop working yet again thanks to uh, my gear here. So I guess it's a good thing I'm doing this. It is what it is. I was kind of hoping I could just get away with the 23 tooth gear, at least for the time being, while I was driving the car, but clearly not. So I'm gonna get the new one on here. Pretty much all we're gonna do is this clip right here pops off, the gear slides off, the new gear slides on, you pop your clip back in. I'm gonna get it done. I'll show you guys what it looks like before I put it back and yeah. That'll take care of your broken speedometer if you're having an issue with it or if you're changing your gears in the back end and you need a different gear, that is the way you do it. And this is located on the driver's side of the transmission, right on the side towards the tail shaft uh, housing, right where the drive shaft slides in. It's right on the side, you'll see it, can't miss it. Hey guys, just like that, we have our yellow, I believe it's 18 or 19 tooth gear. Um, 
but it's the color's yellow for it. This is your factory gear. This is what Ford put in your Cobra, at least. I'm not too sure about the GTs, but the Cobra does have the yellow gear and it does have a different um, drive gear also that's located in the transmission. But when you buy one of these gears, it will usually come with a new clip. So just keep that in mind. I use the new clip. There's no reason to not use it. It's there for a reason. But yeah, so that's it. The clip just locks this on the shaft so it can't pull off, obviously. And we're going to slide this back into the trans. It might help you to put some transmission fluid on this O-ring just so it slides in nice and smooth. And um, we'll get it bolted down. Uh, if I didn't mention it, this is an 11 millimeter bolt that holds it in. It's right here. Just one bolt, one plug, and that's it. You're good to go. So I'm going to toss this back in. And we already have our wheels off here, our big meats. Those things are really, really wide. Um, I might pull the drive shaft and maybe the sway bar tonight. Maybe I'll pull the shocks off too. I don't know. We'll see how far we get but I don't really think I want to pull the whole rear out right this minute. Um, I really don't feel like doing it. So yeah. Something to consider guys. I like to put the bolts where I got them from. So like I threaded both of the caliper bracket bolts there and both of the slide pin bolts there. That's just so I don't lose anything. Um, I, you know, I like to keep track of stuff like that. Just so you remember where stuff goes and uh, you won't have no issue. Obviously, you can't do that all the times, especially if you're replacing parts or not. You could get Ziploc baggies and you could label them, which I've done also, like when I was doing my Jeep, which is, I know you guys can't see it, but south side. Um, I just got Ziploc baggies and labeled the bolts, but I'm pulling both brake uh, calipers and brackets and rotors off. I'm going to zip tie this caliper up out of the way. Um, on my particular Mustang, you will not need to disconnect the braking system because I have two separate soft lines that run up top there. Um, if you have like a Fox body or a 94, 95, you will have the brake line on the axle. So you will have to disconnect your calipers via the hoses. And, um, you know, obviously you have to bleed your brakes and everything, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go get the other side taken apart and everything and, um, see what else we could pull off this thing really quickly. All right, guys. So honestly, I'm extremely beat from work this week and I had a pretty rough end of the week last week. So I'm honestly just not in the mood to keep going, but there's really not that much stuff left to get the axle actually out of the, the Mustang here. Uh, I'm just going to go over with you guys. You know, obviously I put the lug nuts on. I did the speedo gear. So those are two things that are now done. Um, I got the brakes off of both sides, no rotors, no calipers, calipers down there. Um, I do, I was looking at it and it looks like I'm gonna have to unbolt it at the, uh, the sway bar over there. There's like a e-brake line that bolts to the sway bar. That's gonna have to get unbolted so I can swing the e-brake line out and around the axle. Cause right now I would not be able to pull the axle out. Uh, realistically, the only thing really left is to take the sway bar off, take the four control arm bolts off, <laughs> And uh, the two shocks and the drive shaft and this whole entire axle will come out and it will be living right here. Um, this is where we're going to rebuild it. This is where we're going to tear it down and everything like that. But like I said, I'm beat from work. I'm beat from work and honestly, I just don't feel like keep going. Um, I did not post a video for you guys last week, which I'm very sorry about. I know a couple of you uh, reached out to me, you know, make sure everything was okay and everything like that. Appreciate you guys. Um, always appreciate you guys. I just... I had a pretty rough week, okay? So with that being said, the Mustang, we are getting it done. We have to get it done. Um, I know this video was probably not extremely exciting and everything, but I want to get some content out for you guys for tomorrow. Today's Thursday, so, you know, I upload Fridays, 12 p.m. So I really wanted to get a video out for you guys. So that is exactly what I did today. I know it's kind of like a little bullshit video, but just bear with me. Um, we will get the axle out of the car. We will get the axle torn down we will figure out what failed because i'm very curious as to what failed in this axle but i do know i sold the car with it making noise so i don't know i broke something it was me i'm the one that did it so we'll figure it out we'll get it rebuilt we'll build it better the mustang is going to also be a hell of a lot faster with a 456 gear so just keep that in mind too we are definitely going to pick up some steam so that should be very very fun i cannot wait for the first drive um, I'm definitely going to do like a comparison with you guys before and after the 456s, 410 to 456 difference. Um, I have watched a couple of videos online and I do know it's going to be a very big difference. So cannot wait for that, guys. Cannot wait. 
But I will catch you guys in next week's video, Friday, 12 p.m. Please drop a like up on this video. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. You guys are killing it. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you today. I'm sorry, supporting video, guys. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get something out there for you. But have a nice day. I hope all of you are blessed. Peace out. Everybody has a turn back moment. You have a moment where you can go forward or you can give up. But the thing you have to keep in mind before you give up is that if you give up, the guarantee is it will never happen. That's the guarantee of quitting, that it will never happen, no way under the sun. The only way the possibility remains that it can happen is if you never give up no matter what.